Hello and welcome to another episode of Geography Made Easy. In these videos, we try to make difficult geographical topics easy. In today's video, we are going to talk about environmental pollution. This particular chapter is part of Calcutta University's CVAC1 Environmental Studies paper. However, this is a general chapter and this can be helpful for anybody who is studying environment, environmental science, environmental studies or preparing for any other competitive examination such as UPSC as well as this chapter is a part of biogeography. So this chapter, this video will he be helpful for everyone. Firstly, we will talk about what is the meaning of pollution. So when do we call something pollution or what is a pollutant? So whenever we are introducing some harmful material into the natural environment, which is creating an adverse impact on the environment, it is called pollution. And the uh, particular material which is being introduced is called the pollutant. So pollutants can be of two types. It can be natural. And it can be created by human activities or human agencies, anthropogenic agencies. However, whenever we are basically talking about environmental pollution, we are discussing about this, we are basically taking into consideration the anthropogenic or the human induced sources of pollution. So if I look at the different types of environmental pollution so this is a graph which shows or a pie chart which shows the percentage of the environmental pollution in any in the world so air pollution is the highest followed by what uh, noise pollution and then we have the water pollution this is specially and specifically in case for the developing nations then it is followed by soil pollution and other different types of pollution we will be looking at each of these pollution types in details and we'll try to understand the causes, the impacts and if there is any other mitigation measures to, uh, you know, reduce this kind of pollution. Firstly, we will be talking about the major cause of environmental pollution, which is air pollution. So what are the causes of air pollution? And some of these uh, things we already know. Uh, burning of fossil fuels. We have the uh, burning of the different kinds of fossil fuels like coal, petroleum, which causes air pollution. We have the industries which use a lot of this, um, they burn a lot of fossil fuels. So we have industrial emissions or any other gases which are being sent into the atmosphere. We can have the wildfires, which may or may not be a natural cause of air pollution. But wildfire, that is when the wood or the grassland is burning, that also leads to a lot of air pollution. Then we have transportation, of course. We have the construction, especially in developing nations and especially in our Indian cities. We see that construction causes a major, is one of the major reasons for a lot of pollution. We have agricultural activities, microbial decays and thermal power plants. These particular pollution causing elements are a little less major. So what are the effects of air pollution? So basically the air pollution, it leads to illness and leads to a serious different types of diseases, especially amongst the elderly, the children. And uh, some of these pollutions, can cause basically problems of breathing or respiratory diseases which block the or obstruct the uh, normal functioning of the lungs. So we saw COVID-19 in 2020 and 2021 and COVID-19 was a virus which was affecting our lungs. People who lived in the cities were seen to be affected by COVID-19 more. They became more vulnerable because already their lungs were weak from air pollution. So if you were living in a city, say Delhi, and you got COVID-19, the chances of you not surviving or the chances of the COVID effect of COVID becoming very bad, we would have become much more. And then do we have any measures by which we can control air pollution? Yes. 
we can use more and more public transport network and encourage community which a lot of the developed nations are trying to do they are trying to reduce their uh, their uh, individual commuting by uh, like encouraging people to use public transport some of the most developed nations in the world have excellent tran public transport networks cities in europe japan we can see this there are certain industries using certain techniques to reduce their uh, emissions such as ad adsorption so these are certain techniques by which we can reduce the emission from the industry minimize pollution causing, causing activities related to transportation like odd even numbers which the delhi government is really trying to do and also there are other measures like more awareness so i'll come to that non conventional energy resources which we do not need to use the different uh, uh, fossil fuels if we are using more non conventional or green energy and of course the most important thing over here is education and awareness which is lacking in most of these cases so with awareness with people becoming more and more aware about air pollution air pollution can be minimized next we move on to the next type of pollution which is noise pollution which is one of the biggest problems in countries in the developing nations especially in india we have a photograph of an indian city of a street and we know how difficult it becomes to just keep sanity in such a traffic but this is a problem so we have the blaring uh, the microphones we have the horns from these cars we have people shouting so yes that is a problem so what are the causes of noise pollution there are two types of sources one is mobile source that is something which is not stationary which is not fixed at a particular place and we have stationary sources and in stationary sources we have industrial operations we have the factories which are of course located in a particular area we have construction which is again located in a particular area we have celebrations but yes celebrations can be stationary or can be mobile for example if we uh, look at a, a particular um, marriage procession then yeah that is mobile that then becomes a mobile source of noise pollution but yes celebrations such as um, even the vote uh, that is the voting celebrations are also should be taken into account here and of course appliances which may or may not again be stationary so appliances if i'm putting the appliance somewhere else then again yes so household appliances they also create a lot of noise and we can see some of the examples here now what are the effects of noise pollution well the main effects are you have certain diseases which develop out of stress so sleep disturbance increased stress irritation nervousness so on human health noise can have a very very negative impact and can we mitigate noise pollution yes by better buildings by changing our lifestyles by soundscaping by electric cars by traffic management and of course by awareness we can reduce noise pollution next we come to water pollution and again one of the major kinds of pollution and something which is very worrying so we need to discuss this in details what are the sources of water pollution well again we can divide this into two we have the point sources and we have the non point sources so when the pollution is concentrated at a particular point in which case we have a certain certain point from which the pollutant is entering the water that is my point source and when we have a lot of the number of sites through which the pollution is entering the water so we can have scattered sites or we can have point sources and water pollution can be of two types here we are talking about ground water pollution where the pollution is not just affecting the surface water but actually it has seeped down to the water table and is affecting the wells so wells are giving me the ground water table situation but we know that if this water which is one of the purest forms of water because it is going through layers and it is getting filtered and ground water takes millions of years to accumulate and to form an aquifer we know that this particular water is also at risk from pollution different sources of pollution <clears throat> and of course we have the surface water pollution which is much more visible but that is 
uh, there the groundwater is also important. So what are the surface water pollution causes? We have the sewage, we have industries putting the garbage into the river, which can be chemicals, which can be also plastics, which can be anything. We have synthetic detergents. So if you're washing your clothes and the detergent soap, it mixes with water, that is also uh, harmful. Apart from that, indeed, we by meaning detergent, I'm also talking about industries which are putting these different chemicals into the water. We have agrochemicals, so chemicals used in agriculture and they are mixing in soil. In this case, groundwater as well as surface water. We have oil, yes, and we have waste heat. So heat, excess amount of heat from, of course, industries in this case, when it enters the water, it can kill a lot of different living organisms living there. So that is also a kind of pollution. What are the impacts of water pollution? Well, here we have a few of the examples of the impact. So we can have a reduction of biological oxygen demand. That is the oxygen present in the particular water can change, the ratio can change, which can lead to uh, different kinds of uh, algae blooming, which can actually is very harmful. And we see this happening a lot. Then we can have oxidized nitrogen. We have uh, the nitrates which enter the water and that can have, then it can enter the human system causing a lot of problems and we can have salinity or salinity is also a kind of pollution. Next we move on to soil pollution which is usually something which is overlooked but it is also an important kind of pollution which needs to be taken into account. What are the causes? We have accidental spills and leaks. We have mining activities. We have agriculture, transport, anything, any waste material from different activities which enters into the soil and is harming the soil, especially because of its chemical nature. That is called soil pollution. What are the effects of soil pollution? Well, soil pollution has an effect directly on agriculture which affects industries, which affects the economy. So directly it affects agriculture. The agricultural growth reduces. You get human beings and plants and animals. So the biological diversity is getting impacted. And finally, the economy is also getting affected by soil pollution. So we have these are the different ways by which soil pollution is happening. So acidification, plant life, air water contamination, these are all some of the effects of soil pollution. Moving on, we have marine pollution. So I just before we move on to marine pollution, I just wanted to say that soil pollution also is being caused by dumping of garbage. So we have the landfills where garbage is being dumped. That is also a kind of soil pollution that the, the dumped garbage, some of these e-wastes which are then breaking down, disintegrating and leaking into the underground water causes water pollution. So it is kind of like linked. Let's move on to marine pollution. When the sea water is getting polluted and the seabed is getting polluted, we are calling it marine pollution. One of the major or most uh, uh, something which is taken, taken seriously nowadays is marine pollution. So some of the causes of marine erosion is plastics, plastics, plastics and again plastics. It can be microplastics, it can be surface plastics, it can be float floating plastics, it can be industrial plastics. Yes, it is one of the major causes of marine pollution. <clears throat> and some of the other causes of marine pollution are runoff. So whatever the river is carrying into the sea, that can create pollution. So that is one of the causes of, uh, of marine pollution. Then we have intentional discharge that is we are intentionally discharging certain kinds of chemicals into the sea to get rid of it or in some cases even very very harmful substances which can have negative impact like nuclear waste the third is oil spills yes big problem um, there has been wars fought and intentionally oil has been spilled in the sea which has led to the death of different kinds of organisms and also sometimes it is in unintentional but with increase in technology with more and more ships flying the sea we see oil spills as becoming something very common and of course littering 
we know that we litter and that litter finally enters the sea water through the river water. So, it's very conveniently when we are dumping garbage, it goes to the sea. If it is not uh, before that, if it is not taken out or it is actually also, you know, littering the, uh, the surface of the, under, the underwater part of the river as well. So, yes, littering is a big, big problem. And one of the biggest problems which I have already talked about is the plastic. And we have the great uh, Pacific plastic patch which is miles and miles of plastic which has got stranded in the Pacific. So, this is all the one time use plastic and it is so huge. This plastic which floats around and constantly this plastic patch is monitored for any kind of animals which get trapped here we see a lot of turtles, different fish, sharks, dolphins, they get trapped in the trash and people monitor, uh, constantly monitor the patch to see if any marine life is getting harmed. But this kind of plastic we have already put into the sea and this patch keeps increasing. Though there are lots of uh, programs through which they are trying to take it out, but it is so huge that tons and kilograms, kgs of plastics are there already in the sea. So before we uh, next time we use a one time use plastic we have to think of the consequences our consumption can have on the environment. Next we will be talking about a few of the concepts which are mentioned in the syllabus. So first is the hazardous waste. What is a hazardous waste? It is a waste with properties that make it, make it dangerous or capable of having a harmful effect on human health and the environment. Any waste which is harmful to humans are called hazardous wastes. And they range from different kinds of solids, liquids, gases, sludges, etc. Mostly industrial in nature, usually a result of manufacturing process. So yes, it can be radioactive, it can be atomic, it can have biohazards. So everything like even when the masks and every kind of uh, the, uh, the PPE kit which was being worn during the COVID times then that particular PPE kit after it was discarded because it, there is a uh, possibility of contamination that became a hazard as well a hazardous waste as well. So it had to be disposed of properly in proper places. COVID itself created huge amounts of waste which we are unaware of but it was disposed of. I don't know how but it has caused pollution which we are not aware of or we don't think about it but yes it did. So human has hazardous waste and human health risk. Yes it has a huge amount of impact on the health of individuals. So we have a person a technician, a person, a baby, a community can get affected by these hazardous waste and this can be done through human health risk assessment. How much is the human being getting affected by the waste that can be assessed. Next we move on to another concept which is solid waste management. Through solid waste management we can get rid of some of the hazardous wastes and other types of waste. So, solid waste is including waste from residential area, commercial area, industrial area and institutional area. So, these are the four areas from which we get solid waste. Any waste which is solid in nature. So, they can uh, according to their uh, categories, according to how hazardous they are, they can be classified and then they can be sorted out and hence they can be disposed of in such a manner. So, the first type is the municipal waste which, where we have waste collected and treated by municipalities. This is the most common type of waste which we get to see on our uh, urban streets in our cities. Um, these now the government is really trying to uh, sort this waste into at source into plastic, non-plastic or into wet waste, dry waste so that before it goes to the uh, to the place where to the dump yard it can be uh, some of it can be recycled some of it can be reused so that it the sorting is better this waste management has to be done before we even we can personally do this next we have biomedical waste and i was talking about biomedical waste uh, just now when i was talking about covid 19 and here we have different colors segregating different kinds of waste. So, we have the yellow which is infectious waste, bandage, cotton, body parts. We have um, 
the red which is infected dressing pop cast we have blue which would be the pp kit also gloves syringe plastic waste we have the black we have the drugs and the chemical waste and we have the needles and cut glass which is white waste so if you are segregating this accordingly we can take action as to how to dispose of these kinds of different uh, waste material next is another important type of waste which is the e waste or electronic waste so um, it describes discarded electrical or electronic devices it is also commonly known as um, w e e e waste electrical and electronic equipment and end of life electronics we all generate e waste because of the increase of technological um, tech of electrical goods and with the technological advancement but how do you get rid of it once you don't uh, you cannot use the particular product anymore so that is how you have to also you know uh, put your e waste and uh, you know dispose it of properly in a proper fashion because there is a way in which to get rid of the e waste so what are the control measures of solid waste and biomedical waste management so of course recycling composting reduction and proper disposal and some of the medical terms which have been used in order to properly dispose of medical waste these are very industrial terms in by which you can get rid of the biomedical waste so these are some of the things which have to be done biomedical waste are very classified you really can't here recycle or reduce them but they can be properly disinfected and they can be properly again recycled i think to some extent and properly disposed of so that they are not a hazard a hazardous substance for the earth so what are the control measures of e waste how do we control e waste so we can have the e waste management policy where we can have a uh, kind of uh, tie up between waste uh, production when waste minimization and reduce and reuse and waste collection storage and proper you know disposal of the waste so this requires a lot of policy level changes and we can see that in india also some of these changes have been taken into account and we see that e waste uh, awareness is being created being generated when people are being told that you need to dispose your e waste in a proper manner so this needs to be uh, you know created and uh, like we have agencies in india if you google you will be able to come across agencies in india who recycle e waste and it is important to you know recycle your e waste or to give your e waste to them so that they can dispose of the e waste properly now next last point we are going to just talk about three concepts which actually require separate videos because it is there in the calcutta university syllabus syllabus i will just uh, briefly talk about them i will not go into details because these separately need their own videos the first one is climate change which is uh, umbrella term and within that we have global warming as well because global warming has separately been mentioned so because of the increase in of pollutants in this case carbon dioxide we see a constant warming of the atmosphere we see a constant warming of the atmosphere which is leading to a change in the climatic patterns now this particular kind of change is actually a natural change but anthropogenic activities such as uh, industrial activities more and more combustion of fossil fuels has led to an increase in the amount of carbon dioxide being generated and being sent into the atmosphere so this leads to a change in the atmosphere and we call this climate change one of the ways by which we can measure climate we can measure how much carbon dioxide is being um, sent into the atmosphere is by a process which is called the carbon footprint so every individual in fact every activity even the when you sit on the internet and when you sit down to watch my video you are actually also producing carbon so because all activities we require some amount of energy this energy is generated from carbon by burn burning of fossil fuels or green energy so the more we consume 
the the more we share we have a smaller carbon footprint the more we consume we have a larger cut carbon footprint it is seen that the developed nations have huge amounts of carbon footprint individual people have carbon footprints which are very large because in order to they will one person will drive in one car and will go to a particular place they will then uh, buy 10 clothes which will come in 10 packets manufacturing of each packet of each cloth of each uh, you know anything you do some amount of carbon is being generated and put into the atmosphere so we have to understand and we have to account for our uh, by uh, our nature by our actions by which we are putting carbon into the atmosphere so this can be measured through carbon footprint and climate change of course it can be addressed and many of the activists such as Greta Thunberg, young activists, they are addressing climate change through the analysis of carbon footprints. And they are actually telling people to take action. So not just on pen on paper, but actual actions which the world leaders can take by reduction of their carbon. The wars which we are fighting are creating a lot of carbon. So our carbon footprints are actually going up and we are not paying heat because climate change is truly there. So I want to quote this, our atmosphere is getting hotter, more turbulent and more unpredictable because of the boiling and churning effect caused by heat trapping greenhouse gases within the upper layers of our atmosphere. With each increase of carbon, methane and or other greenhouse gas levels in the atmosphere, our local weather and global climate are further agitated, heated and boiled. So it is a kind of a vicious cycle. So the more you do, the more it becomes, the more and you try to mitigate it by doing some little bit more and it becomes the atmosphere becomes more heated, more agitated, more boiled. So this is a beautiful way of describing climate change and the impacts. We know that cyclones, wildfires, we know glaciers are melting, we know there are floods, there are droughts. All these are a cause of climate change. It is not just global warming but in certain parts of the world we are experiencing global cooling, we are experiencing blizzards and that is also abnormal. So it is all because of the change in the climatic patterns. So, of course, I talked about global warming and yes, global warming, global cooling are a part of the umbrella term climate change. I will not go into any more details in this. We know about ozone layer depletion where uh, the ozone, which is three molecules of oxygen in the upper layer of the atmosphere, in the stratosphere, protect the atmosphere from harmful gases or harmful ozone, ultraviolet radiation from the sun. Now, certain chemicals pollutants uh, were actually breaking down the ozone. Some of the pollutants are the chlorofluorocarbons or the CFCs. So CFCs have actually uh, broken down the ozone and we see patches, the ozone layer becoming patchy and we call this ozone hole. But with the banning of the CFCs, we have seen a positive impact. So actually the ozone hole story is a positive story. So in the uh, 80s from when 70s, late 70s, 80s from when CFCs were banned till now in the 2000s, 20, uh, 2020s, we can see that the ozone hole has shrunk. And this is now right now not one of the major uh, concerns, global climatic concerns as it was in the 90s. Because when we were children, when we were in school, we used to hear so often about ozone layer depletion. But now we don't hear about it so much. Climate change is right now something which we talk about much more. And of course, we have acid rain. And I put deliberately the photograph of Taj Mahal because Taj Mahal is affected by acid rain. So acid rain is when the gases, when gases which are reacting with uh, the atmosphere, with uh, they are uh, actually forming the clouds. And these clouds are when they are condensing the gases, they are forming these mild, they are of course react uh, like they are, the water vapor is also there. They are combining with the water vapor and in the clouds we see the droplets which are not really pure water but rather it is mild dilute uh, acids. So when there is rainfall in especially industrial areas, this rain is coming down not as pure distilled rainwater but rather as mild acids. These mild acids stain any particular monument 
or it can have any adverse impact on the ground on the crops so we see that particular kind of rain is called acid rain if you look at these areas these patches on taj mahal it was not so dark colored it was more whiter in the past so these patches have been caused because of acid corrosion because we know that marble is a soft rock it absorbs the acid so it has it has got stained because of acid corrosion and it is a serious problem but yes to stop this like around agra they have removed the tanneries which were causing the uh, fumes to come out they have removed them from the uh, surrounding areas and put them outside many of the international cities they have removed all their industries away from the cities some of them have deindustrialized but in developing nations this is a challenge of course we have also traffic ex exhaust which is also again combining and which is making the monuments uh, you know darker staining the monuments creating acid rain but yes again something which can be addressed if we want to so uh, yes so i think i have come to the end of the video if you have any doubts and questions please uh, write to me in the comment section and i can then discuss of course the last part of the video was not so much in details because i feel that they need their separate discussions all together but as an overall general view i think this will do and if you find this particular video useful please like it please share it with your friends and do not forget forget to su subscribe to my channel and please press the bell icon to do so thank you for watching and we will meet in the next video thank you very much